All right, as we get folks starting to join us, I wanna say welcome. You are live with LAFD, I'm Firefighter Margaret Stewart, and today we're gonna to be discussing the incident command system. So I'll repeat that again, because we just got a bunch of folks coming in. I wanna welcome you to today's session of Live with LAFD. I'm Margaret Stewart, and today we're going to be talking about the incident command system with Battalion Chief Scott LaRue. And before we jump into that, I just wanna review last time we were with Battalion One, the Battalion Command Team, and you got to see their rig, you heard what the battalion chief's role is at different incidents, the role that we have called emergency incident technician, the EIT, what they do, and what's happening at the back of the battalion command vehicle. So that's gonna tie in today. So now you're gonna get the bigger picture as to how that battalion chief fits into the entire command system, where this came from, how we use it, why it's important. Um, we're gonna go through all of that. So I wanna welcome um, all of our friends. We got Poland is here. Who else do we have coming in? Chicago, lots of Colorado Springs Fire Department. Welcome. Got lots of highs to everybody. So I will say, um, if you do have questions, we wanna keep it on topic um, so we can be specific about the questions. But if you have any questions about the incident command system, about command roles as we're going on, please do type them in and we'll answer as many as we can. All right, so I'm going to introduce you now to Cap or Chief LaRue. He is one of the supervising battalion chiefs here at our Metro Fire Communications Center, which is where we are. We're actually in, this is the uh, Department Operations Center. Uh, this gets spun up for big incidents, um, for events, etc. when we need to bring in a, another level of um, management, then this is facility gets used then. So Chief LaRue, I'm going to turn this around. We're going to bring you in. Hey, good afternoon. Hi. Okay. So you are here today to introduce us to the incident command system. So what is it first off? So basically it's just a, uh, it's a, it's like a common language that we're going to use to manage incidents in where this came from uh, in, the, in the early 70s, we have catastrophic brush fires, wildland fires. And anyone that's lived in Southern California in the fall, you know we get terrible Santa Ana winds and we have a tendency to lose a lot of structures and the fires get really big really fast. The problem that you have at that moment was not everyone's speaking the same language, not everyone's using uh, the same uh, radios, not everyone's using the same management structure. So the ICS was born right here in Southern California. A group of fire departments got together and they said, hey, we need to fix this. Uh, you, you had CDF or Cal Fire now, Los Angeles Fire Department, LA County Fire Department, US Forest Service, uh, and some other uh, fire departments within the area decided, hey, we need to come up with a common language. Imagine trying to build a house and your plumber speaks one language, your carpenter speaks another language, your electrician speaks another language, and they all use different measurements and tools. Yeah, That's it's going to be a mess. <laughs> it's going to be a mess. <laughs> so they had to come up with some common uh, denominator and a common language. Almost the language is probably the best way I can describe mm -hmm. it. So when I say I want an engine, all the agencies know what I'm talking about. And then they can, I can get even more specific. I want a type one engine. And every agency in, throughout the whole country knows what that is. Right. Because you know, you, with your analogy, you may just have a really scary looking house, but at a big incident, if we can't communicate properly, you know, the repercussions of that could be severe. And we're talking seconds and matter. So right. the, on just one person picking up the phone and saying, hey, I see a brush fire in the north end of the valley, we will respond close to four agencies and upwards of 100 people with six to seven aircraft, all coming from different federal, state, local government, all coming together. And if I'm the first one there and I organize this using ICS, they understand the structure, who's in charge, who they're reporting to, what radio frequency they're gonna be on, 
and what the mission is and what the end state is. Great. All right, well, I know you have a, uh, a slide back here to help us be able to visualize it. If you want to uh, kind of walk us through what the elements are and how you know, we know this can get scaled up, we can have a rubbish fire with one engine, or we could have a she's major a brush host. fire. If you Sorry. don't know Margaret Stewart, she's <laughs> such a good host. Okay. We're, it's a team here, it's a team effort. A captain from, the, we need to do an interview with Margaret. <laughs> I'd be happy to do it. Captain from the Army. Oh, come on now, Chief. Point grad. This isn't about me. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna bring us right back. Yeah. Oh no, we look, see, it. look what happened. Oh we no, our technology. Uh, All right, can we bring it back? I'll try. But anyways, you're, Margaret, <laughs> uh, just, phenomenal uh, person that we do need to do an interview. And I'm, <laughs> she didn't know I was gonna say that. <laughs> and I'm glad she didn't because- See, look what's happened. We've, we've lost our- um, uh, I think I can get it back. There's no while the chief While the chief's working on that, I'm just gonna emphasize that this system is scalable and, he'll, and, and we'll go over that. But this same command system is put in place when the first resource arrives and then it can become bigger and bigger and bigger as you have a more complex incident. Okay, so we're back. All right. So back on Margaret. <laughs> we will do an interview. I, if they have it my way, we're gonna do an interview with Margaret. Very talented firefighter. Okay, so all the right. incident command structure, it all, it all starts with the incident commander. Obviously, even like Margaret's uh, example of a rubbish fire. A fire, you call in a rubbish fire, fire engine's gonna show up, that captain's gonna be the incident commander of that incident. Although that's a small incident, but that's all he needs. It's just, just it's scalable, is the whole purpose of the ICS system. As that rubbish fire, let's say it's next to a house, and now the house is involved. Okay, so now we work our way down, and the incident commander determines, hey, is the size, scope, and complexity of this incident requiring me to have a PIO, a safety officer, or a liaison? If, if the incident commander says, no, I don't need those, he or she assumes those roles. So you work your way down, you go, hey, I really don't need an ops section chief, but I really do need some divisions and groups, and I need some strike teams or task forces or single resources. I really don't need air ops, so I don't need that. So basically we're gonna work from the incident commander through the ops section chief, through branches, through divisions, and we're just gonna get some more single resources. Now- So chief, if we can um, detail that a little bit, when yes, you talked about a structure fire. So if we have a multi-story building, can you explain how, like what, what does the division look like at a so structure fire? Let's go to our other whiteboard. We're, <laughs> we're fancy. We're gonna tech this thing up. <laughs> so, don't make fun of my drawing. <laughs> so here's our two-story house. And let's say we got fire coming out of one window. So using ICS, obviously that first engine, he's gonna be incident commander or IC for short. He's gonna deploy his engine hose line through the front door and go to the second floor. Now, this house fire, for example, we got a lot of things we need to do. We got to secure utilities, turn off water, gas, electric. We've got to search the house. We've got to do our primary objective is put the fire out. So we've got a lot of things we need to do. So let's hand out some hats using ICS. Obviously, he's the initial incident commander, but fires on the second floor Let's make that a division. And we'll just use division for short. And we'll break it up. Doing that. And we'll have a third division, which we'll call roof. And for simplicity, we'll just call this second floor. We'll call that division one. First floor, we'll call that division, or sorry, division two and division one. So now our ICS structure has three more boxes that all report to the IC. There's, I'll just use R for roof, there's division one and division two. Within each division, maybe 
three, two, engines or trucks. And obviously if you had these three engines, these two trucks, and let's say two more engines down here, now I've got like seven people reporting to me. And at the, as the incident commander, the complexity, that's too much. So I'll break it down and I'll just have three people reporting to me. And these three, these three people have three people underneath them. So let's go back to our org chart. So we've established a roof division. We don't have any strike teams. We don't have any task forces. We just have single resources of engines and trucks going to that division. That division now reports to the IC. The beauty with incident command system is as the captain is the IC and he's got these three divisions, in comes a chief officer, a higher ranking uh, officer arrives on scene. We will do transition of command, transfer command to me. He'll give a size up. He'll say, hey, this is what I have. This is what I've done. This is what I need. At that point, I'll, I'll assume command and, and either scale this up or scale it back. We can make this really big. Let's say the house fire is next to brush. And now I have a brush fire because this thing spotted and I got fire going up a hillside. And now let's just make it really crazy with a 15 to 35 mile an hour wind pushing it. So if you've been in Southern California, this is real. <laughs> this, this could happen. <laughs> so you can see now the scalability. You're like, whoa, this is going to be several thousand acre fire. It's going to expose several more houses. So let's go back to our chart and what I call our toolbox. Sorry, I probably shouldn't stand in front of the camera. <laughs> so you're, I'm a novice to this whole acting thing. <laughs> so now what are we going to need for brush fire? We're probably going to need air ops. I'm probably going to need a planning section to keep track of my resources, get some situational awareness with some maps. I probably won't need a demo unit leader right away or documentation or some tech specs. Logistics. I'm probably going to need some food because we're going to be there for several days, if not weeks. And you can see how this will continue to expand out. I'm probably going to need a PIO. So Margaret's going to need to leave her office and come on out and help the team. <laughs> and take care of the media for us, safety officer, liaison officer, so forth and so on. And that's for, that's the scalability. As the fire goes out and the media disappears, I can tell the PIO, go home. If the, we don't have a PIO, the incident commander will assume that responsibility. And I can do that all throughout the whole incident. As I get more people to show up, the complexity gets, gets worse. I pass out hats. Hey, I got a bunch of homes on fire. I need an ops section chief. Here you go. That's now your problem. Go deal with it. My job is to get him the resources and the support he needs to go do his job. And let's mention, so here we talked about um, divisions. Let me get this on camera here. Branches. Can you explain how a branch comes into play? So in this scenario, we've got the house going and now we've got, we've added two more divisions. Let's call them division A and division Z. And now I've got five people reporting to me and that complexity is getting, it's getting crazy. I got too many people on the radio trying to get a hold of me. I got to worry about food. I got to worry about a plan tomorrow. So let's break this up even more. So I go, hey, I'm going to make a branch. So let's put the brush fire as branch one and that'll have division A and division Z or Zulu under branch one. And if you want to, I can do, break it down even more and put the house fire, which is, that had roof division, division one and division two as branch two. So now the IC is up here, right? I only have to talk to two people. Which is a whole lot less than 30 people. Because <laughs> if now going back to here, if I don't have all these people with me, I've got to assume all these other roles. 
So if I put two branches in place, I got two branches. They're going to handle the offset, the offside of that problem for me. And now I've got to start worrying about some other things because this is going to be a, you know, a week, two week event, possibly with uh, multiple homes. You're talking evac. Um, yeah, you're talking uh, multiple structures on fire. It's probably going through multiple, multiple jurisdictions. And the beauty with this is we can put this fire in Arizona, Alaska, or right here in Los Angeles, and everyone knows what I'm talking about when I say, hey, you're part of branch one, designing a division A, and your mission is this, and the end state is this. Right. And they know exactly what to do. And by the way, the common communications are these, and they understand all that stuff because of ICS. And just to emphasize, when this was, when ICS was introduced, it was adop adopted by FEMA, which is why it's now the national standard. So whether it's at, you know, a brush fire, whatever kind of emergency, it could be a hurricane response and all these FEMA task forces are coming in, they're all gonna have the same common language. So our house will look nice once it's built. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's part of uh, Homeland Security to get grant funding uh, after 9-11, President Bush said, hey, we've now adopted this Southern, right here where it was born in Southern California, we've now adopted it nationwide. So uh, to your smallest municipality, uh, to your law enforcement, even the private sector, your non-government uh, uh, organizations uh, have all accepted this and adopted it. And we've used it for the marathon. It's not just fire or uh, medical. Uh, we use it for the marathon. We use it, uh, you can use it for, you know, next time you get, they're planning a birthday party, <laughs> you can use this. You got someone in charge, you got someone planning it, you got the ops guy <laughs> worrying, worrying about the clowns and everything else that, you got logistics, you got the cake, yeah. you know, you got punch, you got any logistics, <laughs> and then of course the finance piece. Yeah, who's you know, paying who's for it? Who's gonna sponsor this, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. So they, in class, that's that's one of the examples they use. Is like, hey, you're you're planning uh, just a birthday party. How would you set up your organization? And it helps us. Uh, yeah, it's like well, event well, management in effect. Exactly. Yeah. So, and w ICS was born out of uh, uh, the military. Of, of course, they they are uh, they're experts at managing large scale events. As like, when we interview Margaret, we'll get into it. <laughs> Like I said, West Point grad, <laughs> Army okay, captain. Okay, coming back <laughs> over here, I do want to highlight one thing. We've yes, talked about um, Alpha and Zulu on a brush fire. Can you just quickly explain, because um, some people don't understand, like, why is it Zulu? Why isn't it not B? Because he went A to B. Yeah, so Can there is... Can you just talk about how we um, organize a brush fire like that? I want everyone to be really impressed with the technology. <laughs> You're beautifully right racing. As we do this... <laughs> I want you to be really impressed with this technology. So let's <laughs> talk about, uh, because we're in brush fire season, and um, although they say brush fire season here in Southern California never ends, um, we'll, we'll talk about it real quick. If, if this is your point of origin on a brush fire, and this is your hillside, and let's say one flank's going up this way, and another flank's going up that way. So you got a nice little V pattern, and up it goes, in the, up it goes into the hill, and let's put a couple houses on the top here my wife's watching this she's gonna make fun of my drawing when I get <laughs> home so I'm fully prepared for that so there's your houses up there so they've come up with some common practices because if they say hey take the left flank and if the if the hillside's going down uh, or if the fire's moving laterally you had to we had to come up with something that would just hey we all agree that the left side's gonna be alpha and the right side is going to be Zulu. And what we'll do is, as this gets worse, we'll put in a division break, and we'll use the alphabet, and we'll put in division Bravo. And now, why is it important to have these labeled? Like it's important that I'd like everyone knows that where if I told them, hey, Margaret, you're assigned to division alpha, and I, I want you to put a progressive hose lay in, she knows that she, if she goes to the point of origin or the heel of the fire, she knows that division alpha is going to be on her left side and sh she'll probably find the division group supervisor that's working right there. 
and she knows if she were to go up and they go, hey, we're going to put in Division Bravo, she knows using ICS, that's probably going to be ahead of her just on the other side. Right. Ultimately, too, she knows that, hey, the fire spotted in Division Zulu, she's going to look across the canyon because she knows, hey, Division Zulu is on the right side of the fire and she'll be looking over here for a spot fire that's moving. Great. And we'll, yeah. work, we'll work this all the way around to the point where we've had big fires multiple branches we've used every letter in the alphabet <laughs> and you ask what do we do next scott <laughs> we're we've out, run out of, of letters, letters. <laughs> i've got the solution okay this is extra credit you're only going to get it here live on lafd instagram you go double a and then double b fancy fancy and then everyone likes when they're in division Double X. Dos Equis. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so you, you, you can double up on um, on the letters. And we've had fires where we're having nine branches. That means, you know, you're looking at branches. Each branch has got anywhere from three to seven divisions in it. So you can imagine nine branches reporting to one ops section chief, plus air ops, plus fixed wing. Uh, some of these base camps, we can have upwards of 5,000 people in it. You're talking small cities. Cities, yeah. And th this is a little outside of ICS, but can you um, explain how... Okay, I just forgot what I was gonna ask. Okay, I think we're back. We, we're, we're in, this building doesn't have the best reception, so sorry if we um, blanked out there for a Don't second. Don't make me do this again, please. <laughs> no, this, we're I was good. a nervous wreck just getting here. <laughs> we're good. Um, what was I? Oh, oh, IMTs. So when when an incident, we have multiple agency, agencies involved and it kind of reaches a certain scale, um, we have these teams that can come in and take over the leadership. Can you just kind of briefly explain what they are and why that happens? Yeah, well, we'll use the uh, type an incident and uh, type one being the most complex, your big incidents, all the way down to like type five, which is being, hey, a couple hour in duration incident. So as the incident grows in, in size, scope, and complexity, we've, throughout the state of California and throughout the country, that, for that matter, we have incident management teams, and they're preformed with all the positions. They'll come with a, an incident commander, op section chiefs, planning section chiefs, and they'll have all these spots filled on and the team. And they're experts at those specific roles. Correct. On top of being firefighters. Correct. So. Part of their 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 day to day operation is working for their agency, and then when they they are needed, they're called up, and they uh, each have spent countless hours training, going to school, preparing for a fire or something like that, and they come knowing what their job's going to be. They've worked together, and they're going to arrive at an incident. The agency that has ordered them is going to give them an in brief, and then. They're gonna give them the problem, and then they're gonna insert the organization into the fire. So you can say it's kind of like, for, for folks that love the crime shows, <laughs> it's kind of like when the FBI comes in and takes over a homicide investigation from the locals. Yeah, you're everyone, like they're, they're if you're the, the local guy, <laughs> you hate that. If you're the FBI guy, you you're it. like, <laughs> we got you this, <laughs> you know? Uh, it, it, we do have some guys on the Los Angeles Fire Department, they do participate. Uh, with CAL FIRE and the federal government on these teams. It is truly a privilege to be on that team. It is truly uh, uh, an, an experience unlike, uh, I mean, you're truly operating at a level uh, of complexity that uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just tremendous. Very dynamic, it's a lot of fun. It's super challenging. You just come back home, you're extremely exhausted. Uh, you rest for a couple of days and you're like, man, let's do that again. Ready for the next one. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, and it, we bring all that knowledge, experience and training. And we bring it back to our agency. So when we have this wind driven fire, we have guys and gals that have 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 experience in all these positions, uh, which makes us even better here in Los Angeles. Great. 
Well, thank you. We want to. We appreciate you taking the time to do this. I'm so and glad it's <laughs> over. I and can you go can back now, to work. You can take a deep I, sigh of relief. Now and it, it's all, all my all friends done. are going to text me like, <laughs> "You were such a nerd." You're you're no longer an Instagram live rookie. Yes. Uh, yeah. You now I now even, I think there should be some cream showing yeah, up somewhere. Everyone, let's <laughs> DM Margaret <laughs> after the show. Let her know what you thought of it. All right. I'm going to flip us around here. And I just want to also add for those, I know we have a lot of uh, firefighters from different countries. Obviously, uh, ICS is a national system, so all of those in the US should be familiar with it. But you can, you can actually do free training online through the FEMA uh, training site, fema.gov, maybe slash training, I'm not sure exactly, Google it. Um, but these classes are available online and you can learn about ICS. It might be something that you can use in your country. It might be something helpful just in managing any type of event like we talked about. So do check that out. And I'm not sure what our next live session is gonna be, so that's Margaret a surprise. Margaret Stewart, no. <laughs> we're gonna do a live Margaret See, Stewart interview. See, we've created an interview. animal here. What? So I'm Life gonna end us the right camera. there. <laughs> Everybody have a safe day. Please, the heat here is not gonna stop, so please do be careful out in that heat and prevent a forest fire, like our friend Smokey Bear, who just had his 76th birthday recently. Um, please, all those precautions we talk about, stick with them. All right, be safe, everyone.